Hi there, and welcome to our lesson four in our P5 Space for Reflection topic. And today we're going to be looking at action and reaction. Um, so let's have a look at our objectives for today. Okay, so by the end of this lesson on action and reaction, we should be able to know and understand how momentum can be conserved during an explosion or a collision. Okay, now we're going to be looking at actions and reactions, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically punch myself in the face. Okay, now what that means is I'm going to show you what actions and reactions actually have. Now I'm not going to do it hard because obviously I'm a bit sensitive and I don't want to hurt myself. Now, if I get my hand here, there you go, nice big firm fist with all the guns behind it. Now, if I hit myself in the face, so I've got a move away, what I've done is I've hit my face with my fist. So I've had an action of my face, fist on my face. Now, the reaction of that is that my face has hit my fist with exactly the same force, but in an opposite direction. So every action there is a reaction. Okay, so when two forces hit each other, okay, so when this force hits, it hits this force with the same, or this object with the same force that, that hits that object. So every force has an equal and opposite um, action. Now when two things hit each other, there is a collision. Now if we look at this diagram here we can see that there is a collision between uh, the black car here car A and the red car here which is car B. Now you can see this force arrow here that this car hits car A will hit car B with a force. Now car B will hit car A at, with the same amount of force. It doesn't matter what it is there will be a force that is equal in both directions. So you saw in the previous part where I punched myself in the face that my fist hits my face with the same force as my face hits my fist. Now we can see here that we've got a, a collision. Now we've got the collision here with the lorry and the car. Now what we can assume by this picture is that the lorry has hit the car with a force. And let's say that force is 10 newtons, so it's hit the, the car with 10 newtons. The car has hit the lorry also with 10 newtons. Now in terms of the damage, there might be more damage to the car because the force, the 10 newtons, that's hit the car is going to have more of an effect on this smaller car, whereas the lorry, which is a bigger mass, will have a smaller, uh, a smaller impact. Now, we need to remember that whatever the, the, the collision, there's always going to be an equal and opposite force. So that could be punching somebody in the face, it could be kicking a football, it could be doing a rugby tackle, uh, which is why sometimes when you see uh, rugby players, they get injured making a tackle because they're hit with the same force that they tackle somebody. Now, we're going to have a quick look at rockets. Now, we've got a, a picture of a rocket here. Now, in order for this rocket to, to move up into, into space, it has to fire out very, very hot gas out of the bottom of the rocket. Now, in order to do that, it, it gets propulsion to allow it to move out. But what's actually happening is we've got this action where we're pushing the uh, gases from the chemical reaction here down, which causes the reaction of the rocket to move up. Now, before the rocket takes off, it is stationary, which means it has uh, equal and opposite forces going in, uh, going up and going down, so there is no overall net movement. Now, in order for the rocket to move in an upwards direction, 
up here then it needs to have an equal and opposite reaction going down this way I think what I'm going to do is uh, let's color those two arrows so we can see them there we go that, no can't see those Okay, right, so we can see the two arrows, one's going up, one's going down, they have an equal and opposite. Now, if we looked at the uh, previous, oh, I can't see that now, <laughs> the previous picture, we can see that this one is going up, which means that the momentum of all the gas particles coming down in this direction will be equal to the direction or the momentum of the rocket going in that direction. So there is an equal and opposite reaction going forwards and backwards. Now this means that they have the same momentum going forwards and backwards. Now in order to get the rocket to take off, it means that the gas particles need to be travelling at a very, very high speed with a very, very large number of them at exactly the same time which is why they create these mini explosions in here that cause the gas to push in the downwards direction so that we can get that overall momentum to move the rocket forward. Now as we've seen with the collisions and the explosions in the rocket there is an equal amount of momentum going in both directions so we've got a force going in this direction with an equal and opposite force going in the opposite direction now this happens before the event and after the event now as we saw with the rocket it goes up so you've got zero momentum as it's stationary and you'll have a zero net momentum after the rocket's taken off. So everything that's going in one direction will also be going in the other direction to cancel it out. And that's what we call the conservation of momentum. Now, the same thing will happen with a gun. Now, here we've got a picture of a gun. Now, we have to assume that there's bullets in, in the barrel here. Now, here the conservation or the momentum is going to be zero there is no force going this way and there is no force going that way so there is zero momentum going in both directions so what happens when we fire a bullet now here we can see that we fired the bullet which means that we have a force of the bullet going in this direction. Now in order to get that conservation of momentum then there's going to be a force going back in this direction that will be equal and opposite and that's what we call the kickback of a gun or recoil of a gun. Now this can be expressed by this equation. Now this can be quite confusing now this is where we have the mass and the initial velocity of the gun and the mass and the initial velocity of the bullet. Now in this we need to be aware that one is the gun and two is the bullet. Then we have the mass and the velocity, final velocity of the uh, gun and the mass and the final velocity of the bullet. Now they should be equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through an example of this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this, this problem. Now I'm going to put the equation here. Now the gun has a mass of one kilogram. The bullet has a mass of 10 grams. Uh, the bullet is fired at a speed of 300 meters per second from a still or stationary gun 
what is the velocity of the gun's recoil. Now, because the initial velocity here is zero and here is zero, when we multiply that by the mass, it's going to equal to zero. Okay, so all of that is going to equal to zero. So what we're now trying to work out is this value here. So uh, M1, which is the mass of the gun, is 1. And we are trying to work out what this one here is. Okay, now the mass of the bullet, we're going to minus 0 0.01 times 300. Okay, now that's 0 0.01 because we've got a mass of 10 grams, which is 0 0.01 kilograms. Now, we're going to rearrange this, okay, so what I'm going to do is ignore that, and we're going to rearrange this equation to get our V1 as the subject. Now, the reason we've got the minus 1 here, in fact, we need to put a plus sign in, okay, so we've got the plus here, and that's because this is going in an opposite direction to this okay so it doesn't matter which way around it is but we're going to use this as the bullet is going in an opposite direction to the recoil which we're trying to calculate so what we end up with is 1 plus question mark sorry that should be times let me delete this little bit here Okay, let's put the plus sign back in. Okay, so we've got 1 times V1 plus minus 0 0.01 times 300. Now, what that will equal is that will end up equaling 3 metres per second. And that's what the recoil of the gun will actually be. Okay, now we're going to look at the momentum or conservation of momentum of an explosion. Now here we've got a bomb. Now at the moment the momentum on this, okay, the velocity in every single direction is going to be zero. Now when this explodes we get a lovely explosion that looks something like this. Okay. Now what we have is we have the fragments of the explosion going in loads of different directions. Now the momentum of all of these fragments will actually equal zero. Now you can work out the momentum by using this equation which is momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So you can see these bits here might be moving slower or less distance because they've got a bigger mass. Okay, now all of them, all the different momentums will add up to zero. Okay, so that's the end of our session on uh, action and reaction that we remember that every force has a uh, a force this direction and a force this direction and as much as this finger hits this finger that finger hits that finger so they hit each other with uh, an equal and opposite force um, so that applies to everything now when we have explosions and collisions the momentum which can be worked out using uh, mass times velocity is actually equal to um, add, should add up to zero so the momentum going in that direction and the momentum going in that direction will add up to zero in total. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you next time.